I got started with study abroad. I ended up moving to Europe, finding my first job, teaching financial economics. And that was the light bulb moment for me was I could move to another country. I could get a job that way. Hey guys, today we have a very exciting guest, best-selling author of the book, Global Career and Nomadic Entrepreneur, Mike Swigunski. Mike and I met a few months ago when he was traveling across Europe and through common friends within our uh, entrepreneur community, I learned uh, a lot about what Mike does and saw a lot of overlap in terms of what we do in career coaching, and what he does in helping people get remote jobs. How did you get into this? And how did you become an expert on remote jobs? Yeah, so there's a huge story that, and that's essentially my book, if you want to hear that. The short condensed story is that I got started with study abroad. I ended up moving to Europe, finding my first job, teaching financial economics. And that was the light bulb moment for me. I could move to another country. I could get a job that way. And then this kind of slowly transitioned into me working remotely, helping build some tech startups from scratch, and then pivoting to eventually starting my own brand, writing my book, creating my own remote job network and helping others kind of get started becoming digital nomads through freelancing, th through remote jobs and through entrepreneurship. So you took a passion about working anywhere, traveling the world, and you started helping other people do the same. Is that right? Yeah, exactly that. I had early success doing it myself. And then I started getting a lot of questions, a lot of people asking me for help. And essentially, instead of you know helping all those people individually, I started creating content. I started creating blog posts and websites to help these people with more in-depth kind of solutions. So just by creating a combination of free resources, paid resources, and a little bit of everything in between. How did you get to the point where like you developed all this this expertise where you could make a business out of it. I was employee number four at a company called Empire Flippers. And this company was essentially helping people buy and sell online businesses. So I had helped broker more than $120 million worth of deals and had kind of seen behind the, the scenes of the internet. So I see how every business was monetized, what business models were working really well. And I somehow saw all of this and still decided to write a book, which is not the most profitable industry to get into, but it can actually open up a lot of doors, which can lead to a, a profitable business. So that's essentially kind of how I decided to start Global Career and started ad advertising services because I saw a, a gap in the marketplace for remote working. At the time of publishing this, it was 2018, there still wasn't a ton of saturation about people talking about remote working, living a lifestyle where it's more flexible. So I really saw that gap and wanted to create uh, products and services that really fill that. You built this business about helping other people really take their careers in a totally different direction. What are the tips that you uh, usually get people to do? Yeah, so I normally start off with just figuring out what the problem is, kind of where they're at and where they want to be and what's the right solution to get them there. Because a lot of times they might think that to get them to their goals, they need to achieve this or they need to get a remote job or a job with more flexibility. When the problem is, hey, they, that isn't really the solution. Replacing a 40, 50 hour job with another 40, 50 hour job isn't going to make more time for them, right? So that's not always the right option. So really hammering in what is the actual issue what are the goals they want to achieve? And then figuring out the, the fastest way to get them from where they're at now to where they want to be. That's sort of where we hammer in. And I think a lot of people just don't have the full comprehension of, of the best path to get there. That's where we start off. The second thing is if they do go the route of finding remote jobs to have more flexibility in their lifestyle, to be able to work from Europe or Asia or wherever they want, when they choose that path or when we decide that that's the best path forward, normally we're just completely revamping their their online profile. We're looking at their LinkedIn. We're doing full audits. We're also going to the resume. It's crazy. I've looked at thousands of resumes. I've never seen one resume that's like, this was perfect. So that's definitely a big issue we have. And it's like, this is your foundation. If you don't have a strong foundation, it's not going to scale up. It's going to make everything you do from career advancement a lot more difficult. And then really helping people just build a personal brand. And then lastly, one of the, the most powerful things for me has been with personal networking. Your network is your net worth is the, the most cliche saying, but it's very true and it's very accurate. So that's something that we, we kind of hone in on is like getting people to do one or two networking events per month to start off. And then it's one a week. And a lot of times it's it doesn't always have to be so professional. Maybe it's one professional event a week. Then the next week it's a hobby, something that is more your personal life. A lot of times those things can blend together and mix. And you'll see a lot of career advancement happening in all those places.
place. It's the reason people join the golf course. There's a high barrier to entry. It's expensive. The average salary of people at a country club is going to be a lot higher than any other hobby out there. So there's a lot of benefits to joining those types of places. And especially if you actually do enjoy it, it's going to really come off authentic and you're going to really be able to network with the right types of people, right? That's it. very interesting, Mike, that you say that because you know our three-phase approach is the focus, personal branding, and networking. And it kind of resembles what you said is really identifying what do you want to do? What are the real goals you want to uh, accomplish? And will remote working really accomplish? accomplish that for you. Second, focusing on that online persona and the entire personal brand. And third, developing a network that can help you uh, achieve your goals. What do you think is the biggest mistake people make or, or limiting belief as they start thinking about remote working? I think the biggest limiting belief that I see is you need to be a coder or developer or super technical. That's the limiting belief that I see the most, even after COVID, after like all these industries worked remotely for two years, and then they're going back into the office. So that's the number one that I see is like, hey, if you have any skill, you can probably find a remote industry or a parallel industry where you're taking your same skill sets and you know promoting that and, and transitioning or pivoting to the remote workplace. So a lot of times that's the, the biggest limiting belief that I see. Other than that, I think a lot of people think that it's going to be too difficult or too hard to find a remote job, which uh, isn't necessarily true. So those are the two most common ones I see. When I met you, actually a friend of mine showed me your calendar and you published a calendar of how you travel. And uh, this year, your travel schedule was insane. How are you able to work and travel to all these different countries and still get your work done? I'm really interested to hear more about that. Yeah, so that's a really good question and something that a lot of people ask me. Normally when I'm traveling, I'm kind of in a maintenance mode where everything is kind of outsourced and automated and just moving along. And then that allows me to just enjoy my travels because I don't think it's a good idea for people starting off to try to balance that. It's just, you're not going to be successful at traveling and you're not going to be successful at your work. It's good to, to try to like figure out what's going to work for you until you have things kind of like on more of an autopilot. Yeah, I think for me, it's just, I've been really good at delegating things that I, I don't enjoy doing and just focusing on those core things that are going to really move the needle forward for my business. That can be five to 10 hours a week of just that really impact impactful work that's going to really have a, a huge improvement upon my businesses instead of just busy work that I don't enjoy doing, stuff that I can outsource to other employees or my team. So that's been the biggest thing for me is being able to balance that. But I would say normally when I'm traveling, it's not super growth. It's not super scale mode. When I'm back in my hub, it's usually like a lot more grinding, a lot more like, hey, I have some really crazy goals for the next quarter. I'm going to hunker down and just spend the next two months really trying to achieve that. So I think it's kind of like this sprint mindset that a lot of people think that they just need to have a marathon, which is good. But for me, I've, I've kind of had that established part of my business where I can just go ahead and do these sprints every quarter where it's really like a monthly sprint where I'm just really trying to scale stuff. And then once I hit those goals, I can go ahead and travel and enjoy. Yeah, that, that's an interesting thing. Like you go through like very intense periods and then you're less intense in other times. So I like the, the sprint methodology. So you've also lived in uh, Tbilisi, Georgia for quite a few years. Tell us about what that's like and, and why you like living there. So one of the things that I love about Georgia is you don't need any extra visas. You can just show up with your passport and you can stay here for a year. After that year, you can essentially drive an hour across the border to Armenia and you can come back for another year. So it's really easy to come here. And this has some kind of uh, interesting effect. So the other thing is because of this one year visa, it attracts a different type of people who aren't going to be leaving every one to two months. So I have a very established net network here of other entrepreneurs who are essentially home based here, the cost of living the the wonderful travel and landscapes throughout the country. There's amazing food. And I would say the geo arbitrage is one of the best I've seen around the world where you can essentially have a really high quality of life for a fraction of the price that you would have in Western Europe or the United States. It's inspirational what you do and, and, and how you travel and how you have a home base in Tbilisi. So what do you think the future of remote work is? Yeah. So it's funny. I just published an article about the future of remote work. Essentially, this article is kind of talking about, hey, right now is kind of the, the present. Remote working is essentially the present. We've all been 
fast forward like a decade with uh, the COVID pandemic, where it's essentially forced people into a free trial of remote working. So for me, I think the future of working is more flexibility. So right now with remote work, you're still having to kind of put in time, you're still having you're having a little bit more flexibility than the office. But I think it's going to be true flexibility for working anywhere in the world you want from a laptop, there won't be so many restrictions on, you know, you need to be in this location, you need to be in this city. I think the other thing is you're going to be able to kind of mold your your life around to fit into your work schedule. And I think that's going to be the true kind of future of work. And this is going to be things like four day work weeks where you're you're able to really kind of have a three day weekend every week. And I've seen some some companies have a lot of success with that, because all these studies are showing that people are, are really cramming their their workloads as long as it takes. So if they have five days, they'll finish in five days. If they have four days, they'll finish it in four days. So there's been a lot of studies behind the four day work week. And I think adding in more flexibility is just going to give people a higher quality of life. They're going to be more productive and more efficient with that. Yeah, that's interesting, Mike, that you just wrote that article. Uh, which magazine was in it? Was it in? Um, so it was a collaboration. So I've written one for Forbes about the future of work. And I've also published one with TopTal. I don't know if you've heard of them. They're essentially the top freelancers platform out there. Tell us, if someone reads your book, what can they expect in that book? Yeah. So essentially, this follows my 10-year path of working and traveling to more than 100 different countries around the world. And I've worked physically in a lot of these countries and remotely in some countries. So in the Czech Republic, in Australia, New Zealand, I studied my MBA in South Korea. I've kind of been detailing everything in my journey. And I would say the, the big benefit is you're going to learn what took me 10 years and about 200 pages of how you can replicate a lifestyle where you're improving your career, but you're still able to be passionate about travel and still able to travel while you do it. And it kind of talks about every way you can go about doing it. But right now, obviously, the the shortest path to get there is if you're working in an office job is to find a remote job. People who have read it, have they said to you that, that they were able to achieve as a result of reading it? Yeah. So I've helped a lot of people. I've got about 250 reviews on Amazon of people that have said, wow, after reading your book, I didn't know this was possible. So it talks a lot about the opportunities for Americans to work in other countries. After I published it, I had one review where the person came and he's like, I'm moving to Australia after reading your book. It was all worth it just for that to having like an impact on somebody's life. But I've helped people before they were a farmer. I helped them get a remote job. They doubled their salaries and now they're able to live a more flexible lifestyle. So it's definitely having a big impact. And it's kind of one of these books, it's it's geared towards a younger audience, but I've had people from every age kind of read it and, and give some good impact from what they took away from it. That's awesome, Mike. I like how you are giving back and you're sharing your story and helping a lot of other people do the same thing that you did. Any last words you want to tell people can help them as they're looking at their next phase in their career, whether it's remote or not remote, but using some of your tips and tricks? Yeah, I would say like the biggest way to kind of advance where you're at now is to one, figure out really where you want to go, what path you want to go down. And is that a path that is being brought to you by society? Or is that something that you actually want to do? So once you have that narrowed down, try to find some people who can help you achieve that faster than if you do it on your own. So that's the real way to level up is by finding somebody who's already been through that path. And instead of having to trudge through the trenches on your own, of course, you're going to have to do some of the hard work. But if you have somebody to help you out, you're going to achieve much higher results. You're going to make more money faster. You're going to not have to waste time kind of figuring out the failures that other people have gone through. So you can kind of streamline things. So I, I'm a big proponent of having a mentor, having a coach, having somebody who can help you achieve those results a lot faster. Yeah. I, I resonate with what you said. I mean, we are coaching business at career parents. <laughs> I myself have worked with 13 coaches over the last four years. You know, finding those experts, like you're an expert, Karina is an expert, is the fastest way to get to where you're going. You know, you want to learn from others, right? From others' mistakes and successes. I mean, there's a, a lot of times there's people who get started on a path and because it's so difficult, they go through so many failures. A lot of people just give up and they're like, oh, this isn't for me. But a lot of times you just didn't have the right guidance. You didn't have the right kind of systems in place to make it happen. Most entrepreneurs, we're, we're just like going through through all these failures. We don't really internalize it as a failure. For me, it's just always a learning experience. And that's kind of how, how you continue to grow. But at a later stage, I've kind of realized there's so many ways to, to get faster results by having somebody help you. Awesome advice. Thanks, Mike. And thanks for joining us today. Appreciate it.